Hey, subscribe. We, pre <laughs> we appreciate you. Subscribe. <laughs> Flywheels, take one, MVL. You know, we've been waiting for two and a half hours just to make this video that we've already made. Flywheels, Moonshine, Harley Davidson right now. Cut. M8 Flywheels. We got four different versions of the ones we run. and We wanted to just give you a little info on the differences, the ones we pick out for different motor combinations, and the options available to you when you build your M8. So we have four different ones. The one on the left is gonna be your stock M8 flywheel that comes from the factory in your bike. This guy right here is SNS's 4.625 flywheel with their strengthened rods. The next two have Carrillo rods, which are probably the strongest rods on them. We have a stock flywheel. And then we have an SNS setup with Carrillo rods on it. So we were weighing them. This guy with the counterbalancer is 39.5 pounds, all right, the way it's set up. Without the balancer, it's 37.5. The SNS stroker flywheel, 40. But that's your stroker kit. The SNS wheels are a little bit heavier, but they're stronger and then your pinion shaft and your sprocket shaft are brand new on this assembly, never been run. And they have a pin in them, which your factory flywheel over here is hollow. So this guy right here, this side's a little better for you. Those are just caps in there. There's nothing through there, it's hollow. If you look, every other flywheel we have on the table is pinned. Uh, the pin adds strength going through, plus when they press it in, it actually pushes out on this guy to actually hold more tension and make it stronger in the flywheel. And what's a, is that a technical term, this guy? On the West Coast, we call them a chingus. A chingus? Is that a floor, chingus. Is that a Florida term, this guy? This guy, see yeah. this guy? Center pin. It's the center pin. Flywheel pin. Well, that's not the center pin though, because that's the outside. Well, what would you call it? Is there a real yeah, name for this? You're just making shit up. Just, just making shit up. Just making shit up. There's so, a name for it. If you call us, we're calling this the Machingus. If you want it, tell me you want the Machingus option. I want the solid pin to press the middle. on the Machingus. And then we do it. Yeah. Take call this right guy here. over. What's this? We'll do it. This one is a, this is a balanced flywheel with the uh, counterbalance are removed, so they rebalance the flywheel to not have that extra reciprocating weight on there. This has the Carrillo H-beam rods. Oh, I can already tell how much lighter this is. Oh. 34.5. So five pounds lighter than the SNS Stroker. So one of the reasons that Harleys have the power range that they do is because the, the rotating assembly's got a lot of mass. So it takes a lot of strength to get that mass to roll, but once it rolls, it doesn't want to stop. So the Harley engines have a lot of low end torque, which is a lot of rut off the line power versus, you know, a lot of your, like a cafe bike that spins up to 14,000 RPMs. There's almost no weight on the, on the rotating assembly because it's one, difficult to get that weight to spin that fast, and two, all of their power is made on the top end, so they don't want all that low end mass. Yeah. They have real short strokes, they spin really fast. Plus these are heavier bikes, you know, a bagger is roughly a thousand pounds. So once you get that in motion and you get this guy moving to RPM, once it's moving that fast, it stays moving that fast and wants to keep going. So when you're in the high rate running 70, 80, 90, a heavier flywheel is actually easier on the motor once you have it at the RPM you want. It's easier to maintain that RPM. So that's why the flywheels are designed that way. We don't want to remove too much weight. But removing some weight is beneficial because getting that flywheel to move and getting the RPMs up, when we reduce the weight, it allows it to rev up faster. So some of these, we've stripped some weight off. Some of them we've had a little bit of weight off, but not a ton. So the lightest setup we have is a stock Harley flywheel setup with the Carrillo rods that the counterbalancer gear, this guy right here, is removed and we rebalance it to not incorporate a counterbalancer anymore. Uh, very nice setup. It will shake a little bit like a twin cam at idle. As soon as you give the RPMs, you're running down the road, very smooth. 
The third one we have here are s s flywheel halves, brand new pin, Krillo rods, 37. Second lightest flywheel we have, a little bit heavier. These flywheels are a little stouter. If we kept them the way s s keeps them from the factory like this, that flywheel would pretty much be real close to the same weight as the SNS Stroker flywheel is out of the box. The difference on this flywheel is we have it windowed to reduce two pounds of weight. We take it from here on both sides of the flywheel. And then if you look, a factory flywheel from SNS is right here. This one has been edge cut. Some guys call them knife edge, but it's not really a knife because it doesn't come to a point like some guys would see on car motors and everything else, but they are edge cut on the sides to reduce that rotating weight. And when you take this off, this is the weight that's farthest from your center line on the flywheel itself. So that's where you want to lose weight. We don't really care about the weight closer to the center line. It doesn't make as much of an impact as the weight farther away from your center line of your flywheel. So the farther the weight you take out, the, the lighter it feels to the motor and everything else moving it. And we like to run the Carrillo rods. They are just bulletproof, super strong. They are forged compared to like a cast rod. Really, really nice setup. Really nice. Nice. Oof. So why would you run this flywheel in your bike? You'd run this flywheel if you are going to be doing a lot of hot starts, you know, a lot of off the line. You want to be as fast as possible light to light, you want it to, you want to go from zero to red line as fast as you can get there. You don't necessarily do a lot of highway riding where you just want to roll on the throttle to pass cars. You want to get from zero to 5,000 as fast as you can get there. Yeah, and that's the same for this guy. So the differences between this guy with the Krilla rods and this one is pretty much your flywheel halves. This is a stock one. This one has s and ones. What we like to say is both of these are real similar. This one's stronger. So if you're doing a 150 horsepower motor, we would probably go to this side if you're racing. Mm -hmm. You're going to be taking it to the track. We're going to do the SNS halves for you. If you're not, um, you're not racing. You might not be putting heads on. You're not really going for the highest horse. You want a good running motor. Very, very set up. This is probably the number one flywheel we sell yeah. right now. We, we put these more, in more bikes than anything else on this table. The second most sold flywheel is the SNS Stroker kit. Our 131s, we get the extra cubic inch by stroking it a little more instead of making the bore larger. It allows the cylinder walls to be thicker without boring the cases. Therefore, the cylinder wall is a little stronger and you get the 131 cubic inch a little more torque by having the extra stroke. This guy right here, we can get this guy in the four and a half inch stroke. We can also get in the 4.625 stroke. This setup is for the guy that wants over 150 horsepower. That's probably racing his buddies. See that guy over there? See this guy? If oh, you're talking to Blake. If you're that guy, you need you need this flywheel in your bike. So this is for the guy that is running his bike. He's beating it over 150, you know, 150 to 200 plus horsepower with this setup and possibly racing the bike eighth mile, quarter mile occasionally, going to some events, winning some money, um, just having fun with the bike, taking it to the track. This is when we're going to the SNS flywheel halves. We don't have to do the window and the edge cut, but if we're gonna assemble them for a couple hundred dollars more, you get those cool aspects and it does help the motor out and it does rev a little quicker on the RPMs. And uh, also on the SNS uh, flywheel halves, the press fit is so tight that they actually don't weld, they don't uh, weld the pin once it's, once the flywheel is set up and you don't actually need to. We just do it on this, on this model just because it's the very last piece of protection that you can put on the bottom end, on the rotating assembly. Yeah, because these are identical, but while it's at the shop being done, the windows are being done, the weight's being taken off, might as well weld it up. These guys are assembling hundreds of these at a time. Yeah. So to stop the shop and weld them, they're not going to, but we don't need to. The way they do this, super strong. It's not needed. Since we're already in the middle of the whole project, we might as well just do it as an added benefit. We, we've never seen one of these shift. Actually, never seen an M8 never stock flywheel flywheel shift. shift. So if you guys are like, hey, we got to weld them up, we do a lot of motors and we do some high horsepower stuff, you know, well over 170, and we've yet to see one of these flywheels shift. 
We just do this as extra security on the flywheels when we're in there, rebalancing your flywheel to your rotating assembly, your pistons and everything. If we're already doing that, you might as well add the extra security. And it gets you all the chicks. And something else in your motor build, if you're getting a custom pair of pistons done, they're not typically the same exact weight combined with your piston rings, with your clips, your pins in them as a factory piston. Right. So typically when we do a custom pair of pistons with a dome or something on them, if they weigh different, we have to pull the flywheel out to make it match your pistons. That's really what blueprinting the motor is, mm -hmm. is getting everything balanced correctly. So if we're already doing that, that's when we add these and we go into the builds. If we're just putting on like an s, &S kit, that is pretty much matched to the factory Harley specs, like their 128 kits available out there, or the 128 kit we have the SNS produces for us that we sell. We could take a stock flywheel. We don't have to pull it out of your lower assembly. Saves labor, saves time on your build, saves money on your build. Um, when we go to our different options, or you want to take the counterbalancer out, that's when we got to pull your lower end out. And these options in front of us here are now available to you. And if you build the bike with us, we'll discuss each one go over pricing for them. And if you need them or don't, or just want to add it because the pricing's not too high and it's extra benefit sets this all apart. Looks good too. Oh, that's why I carry it around. Yeah, he does in a backpack, comes to work and he's like, oh, takes his backpack off, pulls his flywheel out and he's like. Oh. Is that bad? No. <laughs> Is that bad? No, it's better than doing it with a head. I do have random parts all over my office though. Yeah. I'd be a beast though if I did that, or I'd have back problems. See my chiropractor daily. You know, one of these times, maybe this winter, if we get a little bit less uh, crowded in here, we'll have to pour that box of oil pumps and clutch baskets and just just do some Insta webs pictures with the what do we have now? A thousand cams. Should raffle off like used cams. <laughs> <laughs> we'll raffle them off. 2,000 use cams, here you go, go at it. We Oil to, pumps we for to, days. We need to see if somebody will just make some badass sculpture out of them or something. You don't get paid, but you do get to make a cool sculpture. So, hit us up. We'll give you 10% off a motor build if you build a sculpture and you're a veteran. We should do a time-lapse video of like every guy one by one just stacking the cams. And just see it grow. And then fall over, it'll probably fall down like nine times while they're building it. Going back to work now. We got motors to build.